for just $14.95 plus shipping and handling. This is CNN. Fighting words from the President of the United States. I want him held. I want, I want justice. And uh, uh, there's an old poster out west, as I recall, that said, wanted, dead or alive. The bell that brought business back to the floor. They took a, uh, uh, an attack right at the you know, financial capital of America and the world, and we're back. Back, but did investors come along? Undivided loyalty and unrelenting suspicions. Arab Americans say, take a closer look at who we are. We are Americans and we should not be judged on our looks, on our last names, on the way we dress, on the way we talk. It is just past five o'clock here in New York City. Workers on Wall Street now and traders making their way home after the worst single day point drop ever for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Also, the work continues for rescuers down at Ground Zero looking for air pockets, possibly underneath the rubble, which may hold survivors. Now, well over six and a half days into this terrible tragedy in New York City, but again, the hope fades with every passing day. Good evening or late afternoon from Manhattan. I'm Bill Hemmer. And I'm Joey Chen at CNN Center in Atlanta. We begin this hour with the latest developments in America's war on terrorism. The big headline today, the stock markets plunged at the opening bell and never recovered. On the first day of trading in nearly a week, the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost about 684 points, and that is its largest one-day point loss ever. NASDAQ lost more than 110. This morning, the Fed lowered interest rates by another half point. More bad news from the airline industry. U.S. Airways announcing more than 10,000 layoffs. But more on that, plus on the status of a federal bailout of the country's airlines. The possibility of that. President Bush denouncing attacks on Muslim Americans. The message delivered at a mosque in Washington amid reports of beatings, of bombings, and possible killings of Muslims and Arab Americans. Also today from Mr. Bush, more harsh words for Osama bin Laden. In Afghanistan, meantime, the Taliban government is to convene an Islamic council to ter determine what, if anything, to do with Osama bin Laden. That council is to meet tomorrow. Today, the Taliban received a delegation from Pakistan, which delivered a message from Washington. It has been another rough day in New York. People returned to work, produced gridlock, and then spot police inspections of trucks and other vehicles only made things worse at the crash scene no new survivors today mayor giuliani says though that the search will continue until all hope is lost ahead in this hour assessing the hit taken by the u.s economy we'll talk to economy.com's mark zandi about that diplomatic efforts by the united states to line up support from around the world and get up to date on the intelligence on afghanistan with a former cia bureau chief and it is back at it at the nation's ballparks. We'll be live in Philadelphia shortly, where baseball is back at bat. Bill? Joe, you mentioned the word harsh, harsh words, tough words from the president today. This upon a visit by the commander in chief to the Pentagon earlier today. CNN's John King at the White House watching developments there. And John, hello to you. Hello to you, Bill. Very tough words from the president today. And some worrying if he's perhaps raising the rhetoric too high. The president using the word calling old. Western frontier justice, if you will, saying when men, the name Osama bin Laden was mentioned, wanted, dead, or alive. Now, political advisors outside the White House say they understand what the president is doing. He has to prepare the nation for a sustained military, diplomatic, financial campaign against the bin Laden organization. At the same time, they'll remember the president trying to rally the support of moderate Arab nations. Many of them have radical Islamic fundamentalists who worship Mr. bin Laden in their populations. I spoke to one ambassador from such a country a short time ago who said he understood the challenge before President Bush, but that that would not be helpful back in his country. Bill. John, with that visit to the Pentagon today, the words the president used, wanted, dead or alive, his reference to an old Western poster that he was talking about today. Uh, why the visit to the Pentagon, uh, and why not just pick up a telephone and call over there? 
very symbolic reasons you would want to go across to the Pentagon. Obviously, the building's still devastated by that aircraft that struck into it by going across the Potomac River. The president trying to send the signal that the nerve center of the United States military is still up and running, shaking hands here, trying to boost the morale of the troops there. And obviously, he could get a firsthand account from the Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld. This briefing at the Pentagon dealt mostly, we are told, with the plans to activate some 35,000 members of the Reserve and the National Guard. So some business to conduct, briefings on the call-up to come, but mainly for symbolic reasons. You're right, the President could have picked up the phone or Secretary Rumsfeld could have come to the White House. The President trying to boost morale at the Pentagon and show the terrorists who attacked the Pentagon that the building may be damaged, but folks are still working quite hard. John, by now everybody knows what happened on Wall Street today. Talk today from the economic team about a possible economic stimulus package. What is the White House proposing on this, and, and what, would, uh, what would that package look like? Do we have a good idea yet or not? We don't know the numbers just yet, but we do have a pretty good idea of the outline. The president met with his economic team, senior economic team here at the White House this afternoon, was briefed on the day on Wall Street. Two big things before the president right now, and he's already in negotiations with the leadership in Congress. One, an economic stimulus package, an emergency package that would include some boost in government spending to try to prime the economy. Also, another tax cut, most likely a cut in the capital gains taxes. That designed to spur investment to boost the markets after that drop today. Item number two, a planned bailout of this struggling airline industry. There's a proposal in Congress for $2.5 billion in direct aid, another $12.5 billion or so in loan guarantees to the airline industry. The president yet to endorse that specific plan, but he did meet with his advisors today. Item number one on the economic agenda, a briefing from the Transportation Secretary and others as to just what the administration can do to help that industry as well. All right, John. John King at the White House live with us. More on the economy today and those massive numbers we saw today on Wall Street to Atlanta. And Joey with more on that. Joey. Absolutely, Bill, as you noted. And John just mentioned it. There's a certain anxiety about giving a little push to the markets and the economy as a whole. There was a massive sell-off on Wall Street today as the markets resumed trading for the first time since the terror attacks. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell nearly 685 points, which is in its worst single-day point drop ever. The volume was described as record-breaking, with airlines, hotels, and leisure-related stocks taking the very big hits. On the broader markets, the Nasdaq tumbled almost 116 points, or close to 7% for its lowest close since October of 1998. CNN's Brooks Jackson now looks at Wall Street's day and what the results might mean for the whole economy. The attacks hit the U.S. economy, too. Airlines could lose billions and lay off tens of thousands. With long security delays discouraging travel, many airlines already are cutting operations 20%. Orders for new airliners could suffer. Boeing's stock plunged as the market reopened with a big loss. Hotels braced for a reduction in travel business. Trucking was hit. There were 12-hour delays at the Canadian and Mexican borders last week. Many factories shut down, unable to get shipments. As America mourned, stores emptied. Example, bookseller Barnes & Noble says sales at its 569 superstores were down 55% on the day of the attack. The economy was barely growing before. Now many economists expect it will shrink. Business stopped uh, last week and it's going to be slow going this week. So the month of September is going to be a very weak month and that probably is going to pull the third quarter into negative territory. More economists now fear a full-blown spiral into recession. It will take weeks or even months before the full economic effects are known, and they could be dire. Nobody really knows or can know. But as Americans went back to work this week, there were some encouraging signs. Of course, economic cheerleading. Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill issued a rosy forecast at the opening of the stock exchange Monday and in interviews during the day. Crops are still growing in the fields and the people are still showing up in the factories and the shopkeepers are out there. Uh, even here in Midtown New York, you can begin to feel a quickening pace again. Labor and business staged a show of patriotic unity in the persons of AFL-CIO President John Sweeney and U.S. Chamber of Commerce President Tom Donahue, an economic odd couple. That we're going to put all our resources to put down those maniacs and, quite frankly, to go out and kick some economic butt. More importantly, consumers were back in the malls. For many Americans, shopping was therapy.
We've been watching all week and we need a break, so we're coming out shop. But consumers were buying lots more than candles. Barnes & Noble reported sales on Saturday and Sunday were 4.5% above the comparable days last year. In Washington, the president of the Retail Industries Trade Association spent the morning gathering reports from CEOs of retail chains. The retailers are saying that um, their sales over the last several days have been reasonably good, given the, the, the magnitude of the disaster that we've all faced and that we're all part of. The Federal Reserve announced another half-point cut in its key interest rate and signaled more cuts would come if needed. In Congress, leaders were drafting proposals for business tax cuts to add further economic stimulus, leading some to predict the nation would still avoid a recession and begin a strong recovery next year. That we would get maybe stronger growth as we move forward in 2002 than we might have gotten if this not, had not occurred. Brooks Jackson, CNN, Washington. So then Brooks raises the point how to make anything out of what we saw today. Mark Zandi will help us try at economy.com. He's with us live tonight from Philadelphia. Mark, hello to you. Uh, good afternoon. We were expecting a dip. This was more than a dip today. What do you make of what we saw today on Wall Street? It was a bad day. It was disappointing. I was surprised at the extent and the, the broad-based nature of the sell-off, particularly after the Federal Reserve Board moved so aggressively and symbolically to cut interest rates. So it was a disappointing day. Mm. Mark, what do you tell average Americans, millions across the country who come home from work and see this Dow number that is absolutely staggering? How do you make sense of it? What do you do at this point going forward? Certainly don't panic. Uh, we've seen these kinds of days uh, on and off again over the past decade. It happens. Uh, mm -hmm. But one thing that always does happen after the down days is you have up days. And I am sure that a year from now, this uh, stock market, this economy will be in a much better place. So it's going to be a bumpy ride. It's a difficult time. Um, it's hard to ignore what's going on. but. If you're the average individual investor, you should do exactly that. You should ignore this. Yeah, Mark, quickly here on the airlines, they have taken a crushing blow for the past week here. Um, what are we looking at in terms of additional layoffs as a possibility and also how the airlines might possibly be able to find some firmer footing? Well, this is very serious for the airlines. If there's any significant uh, economic loser in all of this, it's the airlines. And we may see layoffs that total as many as 100,000. So this is very significant. And I do think the airlines uh, do need some financial help from, from the federal government. And I think that'll be forthcoming. And hopefully that'll staunch the, the worst of it for those airlines. And, you know, we'll get back in the airs and we'll start traveling and commerce will pick up again. And uh, hopefully the airlines will pick up with it. What are you doing tomorrow, Mark? You buying? You know, I think there are some bargains out there. I think the market is uh, appropriately valued and now probably undervalued given uh, today's sell-off. So I think, yeah, looking down the road a bit, I think uh, you should be optimistic in, in the country, in the economy, and in stock prices. Mark Zandi, Economy.com, live from Philly. Mark, thanks for sharing your thoughts today. Again, the Dow Jones Industrial Average down almost 700 points today on Wall Street. A lot more coming up in the markets after we close out here next hour. CNN, Lou Dobbs and Moneyline comes your way at 6 o'clock Eastern time. Much more on what happened today on Wall Street coming up then. In the meantime, though, there was a lot of talk today uh, about getting Manhattan back to normal. But how you define normal certainly has been a major issue here and uh, a bit of a difficult prospect at this time as well. But nonetheless, commuters did start streaming back into the southern end of Manhattan Island. And CNN's Martin Savage was there to see a lot of commuters get off that boat from Staten Island along the ferry. Marty, hello to you. Hello, Bill. Try as they might, it was still not a normal day for many commuters, but that had nothing to do with transportation. It had to do with the mindset of facing once again lower Manhattan. The Staten Island Ferry began operating again at 6 o'clock this morning following what had been a six-day disruption. That is the longest disruption that the ferry service has ever had in its nearly 100 years of operation. On any given day, there are probably about 65,000 commuters that make the commute, the five-mile journey that takes about 25 minutes from here over to lower Manhattan. Today, they say that there were about 20% fewer people that went on that journey. Not that surprising, probably. One thing you do find, the passengers stood on the rail and they would just stare in the distance at that New York City skyline. They could not believe that the two buildings were gone. Here's some of what they had to say. It gives me just like 
a very bad feeling of like somebody has really invaded us and just like if someone came into your home and stole something from you, I guess. <laughs>